So I wanted to take a few minutes here and do a video that I've really been meaning to do for the longest time. In fact, I've put this off for quite a while and I always get guys asking me about these too. So I wanna talk about two rear backup iron sights and those are the Maytech rear backup flip of iron sight and the KAC or Knight's Armament micro backup iron sight. So um, I'm gonna pull these optics off here and kind of get a little bit better look at these up close. Uh, and I, I need to fine tune the zero on both of these. So not too worried about pulling these off. Um, this is one of the nice things about QD mounts. Um, they come off easy and they mount back up pretty, pretty nice. So I don't have to worry about making too many adjustments when I mount these back up and, and fine tune them here. So um, let's get a little bit closer look at both these guys and I'll talk about both of them separately, kind of compare and tra contrast the two, uh, give you my opinions on both and um, you know, which one I like better. So let's do that. So moving the Knight's armament aside and looking at the, the Maytech backup iron sight here, uh, this is the rear sight that the U.S. Army has used for the longest time. I'm, I'm not 100% sure if they're still issuing it. They were when I was in the service, but um, if they're not, you know, they're probably still floating around. This is the bigger, bulkier, and heavier of the two. Um, it is also a little less expensive, so that's kind of the positive to uh, this sight here. Both of these sights are rear adjustable, obviously, so you have a 200 to 600 meter setting uh, with a switch on the side here. Uh, this line between three and 400 is your zero. I would have to double check the instructions, but I wanna say they're having you zero at 25 meters, which is more or less set up for uh, guys on uh, zero lines in the military. Um, after you're done doing that, I would advise confirming zero at probably two or 300 meters and making sure your point of impact is on. But anyway, it cranks all the way down to 600. Um, it goes, 400, 455, 556. So you start going into 50 meter increments after a little while um, for obvious reasons there. But anyway, what you're doing is raising, uh, turning this, and this is raising the sight. So flipping the rear sight up requires a good amount of pressure. In fact, when these are new, they're pretty damn solid. So if you've never messed with these before and your sight is brand new, don't be surprised if you're gonna have to press up, press up pretty hard on that. Um, once it's up, there's nothing holding it in place, so it does have the ability to kind of float. Um, if you were to bash it up against something, you know, you're not gonna break anything. It would just fold down, is likely the worst thing that would happen. Um, there is only one peep here. There's nothing adjustable, but it is your standard, standard peep size there. Uh, your windage adjustment is made by this knob here. Again, pretty standard military stuff. Uh, and I think the only other note I'll make on this guy is on the clamps uh, and on this one i have upgraded the the clamp uh, the weak point on these sites is the screw and the clamp so this is a ford controls uh, retrofit kit uh, the stock one that comes with this guy is a pretty big screw it's a little bit bulkier um, and there's a ten the guys have a tendency to over torque these and either break the screw the mount or both so i've i've pretty much replaced this just to completely avoid that um, and that's a good upgrade i would say if you have one of these sites um, and if you're doing a lot of re removing and stuff like that, uh, one, just be careful of how much you're torquing it to just upgrade to this guy to begin with. So setting this guy over here, bringing back in the Knight's Armament. Let's talk about this one real quick. So the KAC Micro Backup Iron Sight is a sight more commonly seen with the U.S. Marine. So if you are a Marine or a former Marine, you, this may look familiar to you. So um, whereas the Maytech is used by the Army, the uh, KEC here is used by the Marine Corps. Uh, looking at these guys right here, as far as the the flip up and everything goes, uh, the KEC uses a detent on the top and the bottom, so it requires a bit of pressure to get up, and then it moves pretty freely up to the locking point. And it doesn't truly lock; it's only it's only um, held in place by a detent. But you'll notice that it's held pretty solid as compared to the the Maytech, um, but. If hit hard enough, it will fold down. So the same thing applies to the KAC, as does the Maytech. Uh, when it looks, when it go, comes to adjusting this guy and looking at the zero, you're looking at it from the left side as opposed to the rear. So your 200 meter there with the arrow, 300, zero is again between three and 400 meters. Uh, just same philosophy and same concept as the Maytech, going out to 600 meters. And actually, if you look closely, you can go a little bit past 600 almost back around to two, and that's completely maxed out. And you'll see that that actually raises the front sight, or the rear sight here, obviously, to uh, give you a little bit more elevation. So uh, this sight, I will note, um, does come with a matching front sight, the KAC Micro Front. 
um, and these are you can buy these as a set or you can buy them separately. Um, the, so that's one big plus to the KACs. The Matex do not have a matching front, so you can pretty much go out put whatever you want on it as long as the height is the same. The height is pretty standard. I'm using a Magpul um, Magpul Pro site up there. So this guy right here, the one thing the one thing I do like about this is uh, you can see I I paint pen mine. Um, the front sight post, which is painted there, um, is is about half the width of a standard front sight post. So um, it's really nice and nice and fine. So it gives you nice fine aiming points, um, which is nice when you're behind the gun and you're doing some long range pick in with this guy um, using the rear back of iron sight. The KAC is the slimmer, lighter, and more expensive version of the two. Uh, this guy goes for upwards of, I wanna say like, maybe 150 bucks, I can't remember, uh, to be 100% honest, you can look out there. Uh, they make a 300 meter version. Uh, again, this is the 200 to 600 meter version, and this one is more expensive than the zero to three. Um, this guy, I wanna say, the, the 300 I wanna say goes to for like 130, 140, so you're spending a bit of money there to get something like this. Um, your adjustment for your windage is made on the right hand side, just like the Maytag again. And yeah, that's pretty much about it when it comes to these two. So to compare the two, um, I have the KAC here on um, my 16 inch SPR, which has that Rainier Arms Ultra Match barrel. Um, that barrel is basically a precision, precision barrel. That's, that's really what it's designed for. Um, and how these ended up on this gun is really a coincidence. I don't really have any rhyme or reason as to why these guys are on here. I just mounted them up there originally and haven't swapped them over. So that's why they're on there. Um, one thing I will note, however, is like I said, the the K, or the, the Maytek is a bit bulkier. Um, so you do have to be kind of careful about what optics fit underneath it or over the top of it, I should say. I want to say I may have been bottoming out this bell on the Maytek. In fact, we can quickly test it here. Put this guy down. Let's get mounted up where we had it before. Oh, back one more and it is it's clear so it's not it's not bottoming out so this one which is a two and a half to ten by 32 millimeter ffp of vortex viper pst um has doesn't have a huge bell on the rear but if you go much bigger than that you can tell there's you're probably gonna start impacting this and you don't really don't really want to do that if you don't have to so one note to keep in mind there it does clear the acog Without, without any problems at all. So ACOG, of course, is good to go. So um, the as far as usability on these two, uh, I would say that the, the KAC is a bit more flexible and probably a bit more usable. With the Maytech, you're stepping up from 200 to 300 to 450, or four to 450, et cetera. Uh, with the Maytech, you are not doing those giant steps. You're doing little steps, which is, is nice if you want to fine tune it. Probably not as nice if you need to get to a certain range very quickly. Um, looking at this stuff from a practical standpoint, um, we can kind of sit here in the shop and we have the luxury of you know nitpicking everything. Um, if you want to get down to it, the chances that you're probably going to have to use these guys um, in re in reality are probably pretty slim. Um, combat optics like the red dots, aim points, ACOGs, and stuff. Are pretty damn bulletproof and they're pretty tough uh, there aren't many instances of guys having to um, pull off a broken quality optic to use back of iron sights so the chances that you're going to have to use these again are pretty slim um, again if, if you do run into yourself in, into that situation the chances that you're going to be shooting 600 beaners with iron sights are also pretty slim so there's a lot of things going against you know even having to use something like this but you know a lot of guys like to have them and i obviously like to have some adjustability it's just it's just kind of fun when we're going out shooting steel and just just kind of playing with things uh and figuring things out there so one last note i'll make here before i let you guys go the only other caution i'll, I'll give you when it comes to looking at these guys um is be uh be mindful of where you're buying these from uh if if the, the source isn't too familiar or the price looks too good to be true chances are pretty high that that is the case these sites uh, are copied a lot. There's a lot of airsoft versions out there. So if you're getting something like this brand new for less than probably like, oh, I don't know, 70, 80 bucks, 
I know these range in price a lot depending on the manufacturer on the Matex or on the distributor rather um, the chances are that it might be a fake um, you can buy these used online a lot a lot of guys get these in the military you know never have to turn them in and they they sell them online or sometimes distributors will come up with a a bunch of used ones and you can get a good deal on the used ones but if they're new again be mindful uh, same goes for the KACs um, if they're if they're less than 100 bucks chances are they're probably not real there's a lot of fakes out there so be mindful I, I can't remember exactly the cost on these but I know the one that that is basically your 300 meter which is not the adjustable um, and this is generally more expensive than that one I know that was go for like 130 140 150 ish so um, they are kind of pricey so just be smart be smart about who you're buying from, um, you know, what you're buying, etc. So if you guys got any questions, put that stuff down below. I'll be happy to answer any more of that stuff. If you want like specific specs on this stuff, I just say go to a Google search or check out the websites um, because that's what I would have to do. Other than the information I've given you here on the tech specs, um, that's pretty much all I know off the top of my head. So anyway, talk to you guys later.